Welcome to Unit 14, Social Psychology, Module 80, the last module, Altruism, Conflict, and Peacemaking. And the, this recording aligns with Meyer's Psychology for the AP Course 3rd Edition textbook. There are four learning targets. Define altruism and describe when people are most and least likely to help. Discuss how social exchange theory and social norms explain helping behavior and explain how social traps and mirror image perceptions fuel social conflict and finally discuss how we can try to promote peace. So consider the case of Car Carl Wilkins. He was a seventh day Adventist missionary. He was living in Kigali, Rwanda in 1994 with his family when militia from the Hutu ethnic group began to slaughter members of a minority ethnic group, the Tutsis. The US government, church leaders, and friends all implored Wilkins to leave. He refused. After evacuating his family, and after every other American had left Kigali, he alone stayed and contested the 800,000 person genocide. What happened? When the militia came to kill Wilkins and his Tutsi servants, Wilkins' Hutu neighbors deterred them. Despite repeated death threats, he spent his days running roadblocks to take food and water to orphanages and to negotiate, plead, and bully his way through the bloodshed, saving lives time and time again. Later, he explained, it just seemed like the right thing to do. Let us also consider elsewhere in Kigali, um, a Hutu married to a Tutsi, and the acting manager of a luxury hotel was sheltering more than 1,200 terrified Tutsis and moderate Hutus. When international peacekeepers abandoned the city and hostile militia threatened his guest in the Hotel Rwanda, as it became known in a movie in 2004, the courageous man began cashing in past favors. He bribed the militia and telephone, telephone influential people abroad to exert pressure on local authorities thereby sparing the lives of the hotel's occupants despite the surrounding chaos. Both Wilkins and Rusa Begina were displaying altruism. I don't know if I said Rusa, Rusa Be uh, Begina. <laughs> Out, they were displaying altruism and unselfish regard for the welfare of others. So Kitty Genovese is one of the most famous sort of stories within uh, social psychology. On March 13, 1964, a stalker repeatedly stabbed Kitty Genovese and then raped her as she lay dying outside her Queens, New York apartment at 3.30 a.m. Oh my God, he stabbed me, she screamed in the early morning stillness. Please help me. Windows opened and lights went on as some neighbors heard her screams. Her attacker fled and then returned to do it again. Until it was too late, no one called the police or came to her aid. Initial reports would indicate approximately 38 people had heard her screams and had done nothing about it. And this was obviously very disturbing to, to, to understand how this had happened. So how did this story of Kitty Genovese lead to research on bystander involvement? Although initial reports of the Genovese murder overestimated the number of witnesses, the reports triggered outrage over the bystanders' apparent apathy and indifference. Rather than blaming the onlookers, some social psychologists, John Darley and Bib Latine, attributed their inaction to an important situational factor, the presence of others. So what is the decision-making process for bystander intervention? Before helping, one must first notice an emergency, then correctly interpret the emergency, and then have a sense of responsibility to help. So all of those things seem to need to be present for a, a bystander to intervene. So to paraphrase the French writer Voltaire, we are all guilty of the good we did not do, right? So we're all guilty of sometimes passing by someone who might be in need of help. And why does that happen? Social psychologists study that. So what research has been conducted on bystander intervention? So one of Darley and Latane's experiments staged a fake emergency as students in separate lab rooms took turns walking, talking over an intercom. Only the person whose microphone was switched on could be heard. When his turn came, one student, who was an accomplice of the experimenters, pretended to have an epileptic seizure, seizure and he called for help. What were the results? Well, those who believed only they could hear the victim and therefore thought they alone were responsible for helping him usually went to his aid. 
Students who thought others could also hear the victim's cries were more likely to do nothing. So what is the concept of diffusion of responsibility? In the case of Darley and Latine's experiments, when more people shared responsibility for helping others, for helping, when there was a diffusion of responsibility, any single listener was less likely to help. Social psychologists use the term diffusion of responsibility to describe the behavior in which an individual assumes they are not responsible for taking action or that others have already done so. So the bystander effect is actually the tendency for any nearby person bystander to be less likely to give aid if other bystanders are present. The presence of bystanders reduces brain activation in the motor cortex, signaling that we don't need to take action. So what, if, what experiments have confirmed the bystander effect? When one study, researchers and their assistants took 1,497 elevator rides in three cities and accidentally dropped coins or pencils in front of 4,813 fellow passengers. When alone with the person in need, 40% helped. In the presence of five other bystanders, it reduced significantly and only 20% helped. So the social exchange theory is the theory that our social behavior is an exchange process, the aim of which is to maximize benefits and minimize costs. One widely held view is that self-interest underlies all human interactions and that our constant goal is to maximize rewards and minimize costs. Accountants call it cost-benefit analysis. Philosophers call it utilitarianism and social psychologists call it social exchange theory, all kind of explaining the same thing. So for example, if you're considering donating blood, you may weigh the cost of doing so, time, discomfort, anxiety, against the benefits, reduced guilt, social approval, good feelings. If the rewards exceed the costs, you're more likely to help. The reciprocity norm is an expectation that people will help not hurt those who have helped them. In our relations with others of similar status, this norm compels us to give whether it's in terms of favors, gifts, or social invitations. And we tend to give about as much as we receive. Sometimes this means paying it forward, as happened in one experiment when people who were treated generously became more likely to be generous to a stranger. What is the social responsibility norm? This norm is the expectation that we should help those who need our help, young children and others who cannot give as much as they receive, even if the costs outweigh the benefits. One study showed that Europeans are most welcoming of asylum seekers who are most vulnerable, for example, who have been tortured, who have no surviving family. So construction worker Wesley Autry exemplified the social responsibility norm on January 2nd, 2007. He and his six and four year old daughters were waiting a New York City subway train when before them a man collapsed in a seizure, got up and stumbled to the platform's edge and fell onto the tracks. With train headlights approaching, I had to make a split second decision, Autry later recalled. So what did he do? His, his decision, as his girls looked on in horror, was to leap from the platform, push the man off the tracks and into a foot deep space between them and lay on top of him. As the train screeched to a halt, five cars traveled just above his head, leaving grease on the knit cap. When he cried out, I've got two daughters up there, let them know their father is okay, the onlookers erupted in applause. So what is a conflict? A perceived incompatibility of actions, goals, or ideas. To a social psychologist, the elements of a conflict are much the same, whether partners sparring, political groups feuding, or nations at war. In each situation, conflict may seed positive change or be a dis destructive process that can produce unwanted results. A social trap is a situation in which the conflicting parties, by each pursuing their self-interest rather than the good of the group, become caught in mutually destructive behavior. For example, it may be in companies A's best financial interest to dump their toxic waste into the nearby river because it's cheaper than hauling it to a proper collection location. But if company B, C, D, and so on all do the same, all act in their own individual best interest, the destruction of the river habitat is guaranteed. So some real life examples of social traps, many exist. Many real life situations similarly pit our individual interests against our communal well-being. Individual fish trawlers reasoned that the fish they took would not threaten the species and that if they didn't take them, others would anyway. The result, well, some fish stocks have been depleted. 
Ditto for the buffalo hunters of yesterday and the elephant tusk poachers of today. Another example of social trap, of a social trap, individual car owners and homeowners reason electric cars are more expensive besides the fuel that I can burn on my own. My one car doesn't noticeably add to the greenhouse gases. When enough people reason similarly, the collective result could threaten disaster. Social traps challenge us to reconcile our right to pursue our personal well-being with our responsibility for the well-being of all. Mirror image perceptions are mutual views often held by conflicting people, as when each side sees itself as ethical and peaceful and views the other side as evil and aggressive, as we see them as untrustworthy with evil intentions, so they see us. Each demonizes the other. This happens all the time in politics. My political party has benevolent motives and the other party is malevolent. So a self-fulfilling prophecy is a belief that leads to its own fulfillment. Mirror image perceptions can often feed a vicious cycle of hostility. If Juan believes Maria is annoyed with him, he may snub her, causing her to act in ways that justify his perception. Perceptions can become self-fulfilling prophecy, beliefs that confirm themselves by influencing the other person to react in ways that seem to justify them. So how can we make peace? These four things can really help. Contact, cooperation, communication, and conciliation. So does it help to put conflicting parties into contact with each other? With cross-racial contact, South Africans' interracial attitudes have moved into closer alignment. Friendly contact between Blacks and whites as roommates improves attitudes towards others of the different race and even toward other racial groups. In surveys, the reason people most often give for becoming more supportive of same-sex marriage is having friends, family, or acquaintances who are gay or lesbian. So the research of Musa, Musa for Sharif is very interesting. It was a 1966 study to see if enemies could overcome their differences, um, to see if enemies could overcome their differences in, um, in terms of conflicts happening within groups. It, the classic study is called the Robbers Cave Experiment Study. And in it, researcher Musafar Sharif separated 22 Oklahoma City boys into two separate camp areas. Then he had the two groups compete for prizes in a series of activities. Before long, each group became intensely proud of itself and hostile to the other group calling them things like sneaky and smart alecky stinkers. So what happened next? Well, food wars broke out, cabins were ransacked, fist fights happened, had to be broken up by camp counselors, brought together the two groups avoided each other except to taunt and, taunt and threaten them. Little did they know that within a few days they would be friends. Sharif arranged for the camp water supply to fail and all 22 boys had to work together to restore the water. To rent a movie, they all had to pool their resources. To move a stalled truck, the boys needed to combine their strength, pulling and pushing together. Sharif accomplished this by giving the two teams of boys these superordinate goals, shared goals that could be achieved only through cooperation. So what can we learn from Sharif's research? Having used isolation and competition to make strangers into enemies, Sharif used shared predicaments and goals to turn them into friends. What reduced, conflict was not, what reduced conflict was not mere contact, but cooperative contact. So when real life conflicts become intense, a third party mediator, a marriage counselor, labor mediator, diplomat, community volunteer, may facilitate much needed communication. Mediators help each party voice its own viewpoint and understand the other's needs and goals. So GRIT stands for Graduated and Reciprocated Initiatives and Tension Re Reduction, which is a strategy designed to decrease international tensions. Social psychologist Charles Osgood advocated a strategy of this GRIT. In applying GRIT, one side first announces its recognition of mutual interests and its intent to reduce tensions. It then initiates one or more small conciliatory acts. Without weakening one's retaliatory capability, this modest beginning opens the door for reciprocity by the other party. Should the enemy respond with hostility, one reciprocates in kind, but so too with any conciliatory response. So it's a promising um, approach. 
So back to the learning target reviews. Altruism is unselfish regard for the well-being of others. We are most likely to help when we notice an incident, interpret it as an emergency, and assume responsibility for helping. Other factors, including our mood and our similarity to the victim, also affect our willingness to help. We are least likely to help if other bystanders are present. This is known as the bystander effect. Social exchange theory is a view that we help others because it is our, in our own self-interest. In this view, the goal of social behavior is maximizing personal benefits and minimizing costs. Others believe that helping results from socialization, in which we are taught guidelines for expected behaviors in social situations, such as the reciprocity norm and the social responsibility norm. A conflict is defined as a perceived incompatibility of actions, goals, or ideas. Social traps are situations in which people in conflict pursue their own individual self-interest, harming the collective well-being. Individuals and cultures in conflict also tend to form mirror image perceptions. Each party views the opponent as untrustworthy and evil intention, and itself as an, unethic as an ethical peaceful victim. Perceptions can then become self-fulfilling prophecies. And finally, peace can result when individuals or group work, work, groups work together to achieve superordinate goals, as Sharif sh showed in his um, study with the 22 boys. Research indicates that four processes, contact cooperation, communication, and conciliation can help to promote peace. That is it for this module. Thank you for listening. Take care.